Many of you have probably heard of 3D printers, but do you know how they work? Well, they run on fairy dust and magic and they just basically like spit out models and you're like, wow, that's amazing. I can print my very own model. No, they're not for that. I mean like models of like Pokemon and stuff like that. This, my friends, is the MakerBot Replicator 2, which takes any 3D model, as long as it, you know, is a certain size and a certain sort of configuration. Okay, not just any 3D model, but a 3D model and turns it into a real life object. So before we get to the MakerBot, let's talk about 3D printers in general. What was originally a development tool for designers and for rapid prototyping their projects and stuff like that is now making its way slowly to the mainstream as a fun, low-cost DIY project machine. Most consumer 3D printers use a process called fused filament fabrication or in simpler terms, plastic filament is first melted down, a nozzle deposits it onto your build while motors help move the nozzle around so that it deposits plastic in the shape that you want. Just like a paper printer, a 3D printer will print an object layer by layer by layer by layer from the ground up. Now when it comes to models, you can create your own or browse the internet for the thousands of models available. No, not those kinds of models on the internet. What kind of internet are you using? Anyway, we've been finding 3D models on Thingiverse, which is a free to use website run by MakerBot dedicated to sharing user created 3D models. It's not a marketplace and all of the designs are released under the general public license or rather the new general public license or Creative Commons license. After grabbing the models, we converted them to MakerBot instructions using Replicator G and MakerWare. Replicator G is a much more universal solution, but MakerWare is specifically designed for the Replicator series and is a little bit more user friendly. Here are a few of the things that we've printed so far, which we will be giving away. More on this at the end of the video. Now on to the MakerBot Replicator 2. This is just one of their standard models with a minimum layer height of just 100 microns. That's 0.0039 inches for you Americans out there. Actually, I think microns are used in America too, but good try, it's his first script. That means that you have the ability to print very fine details with very small tolerances, allowing for smooth and precise models. It can print objects up to 28.5 centimeters long. That's about 12 inches. Uh, speaking of up to 28.5 centimeters long by 15.3 centimeters wide by 15.5 centimeters high. It uses MakerBot PLA filament, which is a high quality bioplastic derived from corn, so it doesn't even smell like burning plastic like you would expect. Some of the Tech Tips team noted that it also smelled a bit like a hot glue gun. This printer also supports MakerBot flexible filament, which is different in that it prints can be warmed and then reshaped and molded. And that would be something that would be, I guess, a little bit more useful for prototyping. Taking a look at the actual printer itself, it has a powder coated steel chassis and PVC side panels. On the front, you'll see a multi line LCD display, four way arrow controls, as well as a center confirm button, and just above that is an SD card slot. Around the back, we have a one kilogram spool of clear 1.75 millimeter filament. This comes with the replicator too, and there is also a ton of other colors that you can buy after the fact. You can get several shades of red, blue, white, black, pink, and presumably gray. Actually, I don't know if it comes in gray. The empty spot here is actually for a second spool of filament, and then at the bottom there's a power cord, power switch, and full-sized USB 2.0B port. Models can be loaded either via the USB port like a traditional printer or via the SD card. On the inside, there are oil-infused fused bronze bearings and stepper motors, and this particular model uses an acrylic build platform with both a smooth and a frosted side. You can actually buy a separate glass plate if you prefer. The printer head is a single extruder model, but it should be noted that you can replace this head with a dual extruder head and take advantage of that second spool slot that we saw before. As far as software goes, MakerBot recommends MakerWare. Duh. It is a fully featured 3D model instruction conversion software. It allows you to scale, adjust, and visualize your model before printing. 3D printing software will take a 3D model, break it down into vertical layers, and then calculate the path needed for the print nozzle to shape the object out. Depending on the complexity of your model and the resolution of your printer, builds can take anywhere from five minutes to days. When converting the 3D model to MakerBot instructions, it also allows you to change various settings, such as the infill, that is how much of the, okay, I guess I'm 
about to explain that, the infill layer height, shells, rafts, and supports. So infill determines how dense the object will be with 0% for a completely hollow model, 10% kind of the average for a model with some structural rigidity, while 20 to 40% is used for any prints that need to be very, very strong. Layer height determines how tall each of the layers of the print is. A smaller layer height will usually mean more layers are needed and your final object will be more detailed and smooth. Shell determines the outer perimeter of your object. If you want a strong, hollow object, you can print with two or even three shells, which will double and triple the outer layers of plastic. Rafts and supports are plastic that is added by the MakerWare software and is not part of your final 3D printed model. A raft is a thin grid-like structure that is printed in between the 3D printer and your plastic model, which helps to level out the model and also helps the model better stick to the build plate. It makes the model easier to remove from the build plate as well. Supports are external structures like scaffolding, which help prop up any overhanging or potential weak spots during the printing process. The MakerBot series and 3D printers in general are a fantastic tool for any developers that can make use of them, but there is still a long way to go before you see one in every household. They are still slow, and pre-assembled printers are very expensive. And not everyone can make a detailed 3D model, so people are going to have to, like, you know, have 3D modeling class added to the grade 3 curriculum since they don't do cursive anymore. I mean, that could, that could be useful. The Replicator 2, though, is a fantastic step in the right direction for introducing 3D printers to consumers, but it may take a few more generations before we truly see this becoming something that everyone has next to their computer like a normal printer. So here is our mini review after the limited time spent with it. Models do take a long time. We printed stuff that has taken anywhere between 30 minutes to five hours. We did have an issue with the model peeling away midpoint with very solid prints, but after cleaning the surface and adjusting the print speed, it hasn't occurred again yet. Models are not all as simple as download and print. They do require some tweaking before you can get a perfect print. So we are gonna be sending out a kit of starter Pokemon to one of you subscribers out there. All you gotta do is be subscribed and comment below and tell us what you would print if you had a 3D printer. Hint, anyone who says Pokemon is probably more likely to win because <laughs> that's what you're gonna get. We will also be selecting one of these comments, printing that object and sending that to you along with the time-slapse video of it being made, which also makes sense. So that's basically it, guys. The challenges of 3D printing are the speed, also the cost of the filament. Much like original printers, that's where they get you. They get you on the ink or on the filament. But it's a very cool technology and very, very exciting times. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.com.